Okay, this is lesson 10 of module 2, 8th grade math, um, sequences of rigid motions. So we've been sequencing some of these um, rigid motions. We've done um, sequences of translations, reflections, rotations, and then combinations of, of some of those translations and reflections and translations and rotations. And now, in the focus of this lesson is going to be using precise language to describe sequences that might be a combination of all three types of rigid motions. So let's look at this example that's not in your classwork. And we have this um, diagram here, and we have ellipse E. And we have um, down here describes what we have. So we have uh, translation 1 that we're going to call a translation along this vector, starting at 1, 0 and ending at negative 1, 1. Um, we also have a rotation. We're going to call it rotation 2. It's going to be a 90 degree rotation around negative 1, 1. And reflection 2 is a reflection across this line. Okay, so the question I want to ask you right now is, do you think, based on what we've done in the past, that the order in which we perform these transformations is going to make a difference? Okay, so we, we have seen that the order does make a difference, um, the order in which we perform these um, transformations will, will affect the outcome, the final outcome image. So what we are going to do is we're going to do it in the order that is stated here. So it says what is translation 1 of E followed by rotation 2 of E followed by reflection 3 of E. So we're going to look at that. So let's first, we're going to then first do the translation. So this is what the translated figure would look like. It goes along this vector. So you could kind of think of it um, as just, you know, moving that vector up. This vector is basically going, taking every point over to and up one. So every point on that ellipse is going over to and up one. Um, you can see the center of the ellipse right here, over to, up one. So that's what that vector did. So now we have figure E1 after the translation. So next, um, we want to perform the rotation. So the rotation is around um, a certain center. So let's look at that now. So the rotation is going to end up where E2 is. So we rotate it around the center here, negative 1, 1, and we rotated 90 degrees in the counterclockwise direction, which is a positive 90 degree rotation. All right, so the only thing left to do now is the reflection across line L, and that's going to look something like this. So our final image, E3, after all three transformations, ends up down here. So we went from here to here to here, and finally to there. Okay, now take just a minute to look at exercise one in your classwork. Um, it says, in the following picture, triangle ABC can be traced onto a transparency and mapped onto triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Which basic rigid motion or sequence of would map one triangle onto the other? So go ahead and just take a minute and jot down your thoughts. So if you said a reflection would um, complete this, uh, would map the one triangle onto the other, you're absolutely correct. But we want to be a little more precise than that. So remember when we talked about reflections, we said we have to be able to name the line of reflection. So we want to say that this is a reflection, um, but that it is a reflection over... We could say reflection over line, um, and how would we name this line right here, right there? We could name it B prime, C prime, or we could name it B, C. So we have a reflection over line B, C right there. So that would fully describe that, um, that reflection there. So now if we look at this, um, we know that these angles here are angle B, 
um, and this angle B prime kind of uh, are equal. And this angle here and the one angle um, C and C prime are equal. They're, they're noted that way. And so one thing we know is that even if we didn't know that these line segments were the same length, we would know that these rays, when this is moved up here on that reflection, that these the ray coming out from here and the ray coming out from here are going to intersect at the same point. Therefore, A and A prime ha are going to have to match up in this case. Um, so anyway, that's just extra. But So for this one, we want to say not only reflection, but reflection over line BC. And that's, you know, that simple. Okay, now look at exercise two. Um, this is a similar one where A prime, B prime, C prime can be mapped onto ABC with a transparency. Um, we want to know which basic rigid motion or sequence of would map one triangle onto the other. So take a minute and um, respond to that. Okay, so if you said rotation, you were correct. Um, a, a single rotation will map um, one of those triangles onto the other. But that's not enough detail. Um, I don't know a couple things about that rotation. I need to know the center, so I could say around center B. Okay, so I know that the center of rotation is going to be right here, and then it's going to rotate all the way up until these two segments coincide. So what I want to say is around center B, and then D degrees, because I don't know the exact number of degrees, but I do know where I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop when B prime, C prime coincides with BC. So that would be a complete, precise description of the rigid motion that would map those two together. Okay, let's look at the next exercise, um, exercise three, and once again, take a moment to think about which basic rigid motion or sequence of would map one triangle onto the other. Okay, so for this one, um, if you said a rotation, um, that's true, you need a rotation, but you also need then a reflection. So we're going to rotate and then reflect. So we're going to rotate around center B. Um, I need to give the center of rotation until um, D degrees until B prime C prime coincides with BC. So that's, um, that's this rotation right here. So this is going to come up and these two will coincide. And once we've done that rotation, then we're back to the situation that we had in exercise one, where all we needed to do was the reflection to make it work. And so um, we just need to say that that reflection is across the line containing BC. Um, so it's that line right there. Um, you might notice that a single reflection would also work. Um, to map one of these triangles onto the other. And think about where that line of reflection would be. Maybe you already have. If I draw a line that bisects that angle right there, angle um, C, B, C prime, um, then I could reflect across that line and those two triangles would map together. The reason I don't... Um, I, that's not my first choice, is because describing what this line is, because um, I have to tell what the line of reflection is, so describing this line might be tricky. Whereas if I do the rotation first, then I know that it's the line containing B and C. Um, I have no point out here to define this line here, so I'd have to do a little bit more work to describe a single reflection. But it could also be done, and maybe you did notice that. Okay, so let's look at um, exercise four. It has two scenarios, um, and once again, we are trying to determine which basic rigid motions or sequence of 
would map one triangle onto the other. So take a couple minutes and look at scenario one and scenario two and think about what sequence you would use to map those triangles onto each other. Okay, so let's um, take scenario one first. And the way um, there are various um, correct responses to this, but I'm going to do mine based on exercises one through three that we've just done. So I see this vector that maps B prime to B. So there's a translation along B prime B. And then that moves that triangle um, into that location there. Um, and now I can kind of see this looks like exercise two, I believe, um, where then I want to do a rotation around center B. So I've got this center. I'm going to go up here until, um, until the triangles match up right here. Um, so let's describe that. So let there be a translation, and again, I need to give the vector along B, vector B prime B. Then let there be a rotation around center B, D degrees until B prime C prime coincides with BC. So that's a complete, precise description of the transformations needed to map A prime, B prime, C prime onto ABC. All right, let's look at scenario two. Um, again, I'm going to start by mapping B prime to B, which is going to move my triangle down into that position. Um, so next, and, and this looks like, um, I think, exercise three. So then I'm going to follow what I did there. I'm going to rotate around center B until those um, B, C, and B prime, C prime match up. Then I can reflect across that line containing segment BC, and then the two would match up. So the description of that would be, let there be a translation along B prime B, then a rotation around center B, D degrees, until B prime C prime coincides with BC. Then a reflection across line BC. Okay, now look at the two figures in exercise five and, and go ahead and work on this on your own. Um, we do know that these two figures are same size, same shape by all of the given information there. So I'm gonna let you read it. Then I will briefly talk you through the sequence that I did and you can check your work. Okay, so um, the first thing I saw was to match up B and B prime with a translation. So there's a translation along that vector which moves um, shape ABC into that location shown here. Um, so now I've got this. Now what I want to do is I want to know where my, I'm going to have to reflect. I know that. But if I rotate it first, then I'll know what my line of reflection is. I can just reflect across a segment that's part of the shape. So I'm going to rotate it, and then I'm going to reflect it across um, segment um, AB or A prime, B prime. They're, they're coinciding now. Okay, so um, I'm not going to write out the description of that, but you can. Remember, you know, you just need to use precise language and make sure you do it in order. So, um, and you, there's actually a different sequence that's described in the answer key in the teacher's edition. So you can look at theirs as well. Um, okay, so I just want to summarize what we have talked about today. So using precise language for these um, rigid motions. So... I can't just say I have a translation. If I, if I want to translate, I need to know what vector. Um, if I see a reflection that needs to be done, I need to know across what line. And finally, if there's a rotation, I need to be able to say 
around what center, so what point am I rotating around, and how many degrees. And as we saw in these examples, how many degrees can mean, um, can just be a description of where to stop the rotation. I don't always know, you know, that it's 37 or 43 degrees, but I do know where to stop the rotation. So I can describe that. So that's lesson 10. And um, after this lesson, you'll be completing the mid-module assessment. And I encourage you to um, use this type of precise language when you do that.